Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and we are still in the finale frontier of music spacing. Today we're talking about manual spacing, or more specifically, uh, manual positioning in the document options. But we're actually talking about manual spacing. Now, in the uh, music spacing pane here, the manual positioning, there's really just this one option, and you have three different things to choose from. Ignore, which is checked by default, is the middle option, but there's also clear and incorporate. I'm going to be talking about all three of these things, but more importantly, I'm going to be talking about um, what happens when you manually space the music left and right in Finale and what these three options will do to them in different uh, scenarios. So uh, we're going to start outside of the document options for a minute. And just to clarify, uh, I just want to uh, review the fact that there are sort of two different ways to mu move notes left and right in Finale. The first using the measure tool if we click the measure tool, um, we'll see these handles at the bar lines, and the bottom one will pull up another set of handles, one for each uh, rhythmic value in the measure, and we can manipulate these left and right to see the, the whole stack of the notes up and down the score being moved, right? It's not just moving the note left to right in a single staff, it's moving it all the way up and down the score. The important thing to realize is about this is that when you do it in this manner, if you were to music space the, the music again, it will completely undo those changes, as you can see right there. Now, this is going to be true no matter what setting you have in the manual positioning, right? So I have ignore here, which you would think would mean, well, ignore the manual positioning and respace, which is exactly what it did, right? Um, but you could also think, well, incorporate must mean that if I have incorporate set, um, after I've made those uh, spacing changes with the measure tool, if I respace, it's not going to touch them. But it actually does touch them. It does reset them. So the important thing to realize is that anything that you do with the measure tool with these particular handles, it doesn't matter what you have set for manual positioning here. Either three of these options is going to basically undo those changes that you just made with the measure tool. Now, yet again, this is another instance where if you're going to be doing this, and I recommend doing this for a lot of cases because, again, it moves the entire stack. You're not just moving one note left or right sort of, um, uh, you know, against the stack of notes. Uh, if you're going to be making changes like this, again, I just recommend that you have automatic music spacing turned off in the preferences so that, you know, if you were to go into this measure to make some changes to the clarinet part, when you leave it, it's not going to re-space uh, this measure. Again, if you had that option turned on, if you were to do this and you l left, you'll see that it kind of respaced all of the notes, um, uh, which is not what you want to happen. So again, leave this option unchecked when you get to this point. Okay, so that's the first way to uh, move notes uh, left and right is with the, the measure tool. Um, this, the second way is to move the notes individually, and there's actually two different ways to do this. The first way to do that is with speedy entry tool, we can actually go in here and just grab one of these notes and move it left or right. You can also do this with simple entry tool as well. Um, but uh, you can see that you can actually just move the notes and you'll see that it will not line up with the rest of the notes. So you're actually moving the horizontal position independent of the rest of the score. Now you can also do this with the special tools with the very first tool here, which is called the note position tool. And this does the same thing. Actually, you'll see your handles here and you can move them left or right. And believe it or not, it's the same type of movement that you're making here as you would with speedy or simple entry. It's actually doing the same exact thing. Actually, the speedy entry is just sort of a shortcut to this special tool, right? So that's what's going on. Now, when you make these types of changes, now, whatever you have set for your manual positioning, now it's going to affect what you do when you have these types of things um, uh, set up. And now when I music space here, you're seeing that the those notes that I changed did not get undone because I have the manual positioning set to ignore. So um, what I'm telling Finale is when you music space the notes, ignore the, the notes that are manually positioned. That's what's, that's what's happening here. And you'll see that it, that's exactly what happens. I try to music space and it doesn't do anything. Essentially what's happening is that Finale pretends that these notes are in their original position and just kind of music space everything around those uh, pretend positions and uh, it, it goes from there. So the other two options here we have are clear and incorporate. Now clear, if you have that selected, 
um, will do exactly what you would think. When you press the, the music spacing, it will actually clear all of those manual music spacing changes that you had made. So you just saw that those two notes in my horn and F part uh, go back to normal. If I undo, you'll see them go back to where I had positioned them manually, right? So that's what the clear does. Um, which is actually, it can be a great way to sort of clean up a mess. If you've got a, a bunch of notes that are sort of manually spaced and they're not, you know, for whatever reason they got there, you don't need them to be. Um, this is a really simple way to do this. Just go into manual positioning, choose clear instead of ignore, and it will completely undo those. Now there's another way to do this. There's actually a plugin from JW called JW Change. And in the note entry section here, there's an option called clear position, which does exactly the same thing. All it does is clear the position of manually spaced note entries. Uh, it's gonna do the same thing. The advantage of using JW change is that it, it does have some filters. So you can choose to only clear the positions of quarter beats or beamed ends or you know any slew of filters, um, only 16th notes or only layers two or whatever you wanna do. So uh, that's the advantage of JW change. But if you just have the filter set to all, all invisible, it will reset all the positions all at once. And you see it will do the exact same thing um, that I did with uh, uh, the music spacing if I had it set to clear. So kind of two ways to do that there. Now let's talk about the, the third option here, incorporate. Incorporate's a little bit different. So if I, well, let's just undo that so I get my manual positioning back and make sure that we're set to incorporate. Now with incorporate, what it's gonna do is it's going to uh, look at the manual positions that I've created and then incorporate that extra space into the music spacing. So if I select all and press music spacing now, nothing's gonna happen because uh, there's no need for anything to happen. But uh, let me do this on a measure that makes more sense. If I would actually do it on the vocal line, uh, and if I get this to the left and kind of get into a crash here, um, with this incorporate setting, uh, it's gonna say, okay, well, he wants all this extra space here. So now when we uh, music space everything, it's gonna allow the left side a little bit of extra room. It didn't work when I had it here because there's plenty of space uh, between the, the natural here and the previous note, which is all the way over here. So uh, again, so the incorporate is gonna um, allow for these manual positions um, in certain uh, circumstances if the manual position you know, like I had it here, just kind of crashed with, with another thing. So, so that's how that works. Let me just go ahead and clear this one more time so we can get back to zero. Now let me show you sort of a, a practical use of this. So if we go down here, I have another situation like I had before where my lyrics are colliding because there's, a, there's no syllable on this, uh, the second part of the tied note. Um, and so this is just a disaster finale, just doesn't do this correctly. Uh, this is sort of the other way to fix this, that we can kind of manually uh, space the, the notes in the vocal part here. If we just kind of nudge this, these three notes a little bit to the right, I don't have to completely avoid the crashes here, but I'm just gonna nudge them a little bit, maybe this one and this one as well. And then um, respace with the incorporate setting set, right? Uh, once I do that, let's see what happens. Yeah, you can see that uh, it, it sort of incorporates those changes and allows for the uh, the notes to kind of move a little bit. So this is actually another way to uh, clean up that that scenario that I was talking about, where the where the lyrics are um, are not uh, avoiding collisions correctly. Here too, in this measure, where we have the problem of the uh, the layer two accidentals not uh, be behaving properly, we could do that here as well. I think if I just move. Let's see, if I move this quarter note in layer one over a little bit, and I move this one over a little bit, and with that incorporate set, I think that'll give me a little bit of a better situation. So yeah, so that's gonna be the value of the manual positioning incorporate, is that you can do things like that. Now one thing you may notice in this first example that I did with the lyrics, um, the downfall here is that it, it does create a situation where the notes aren't exactly aligned up and down the score. You can see my clarinet part is a sort of duplicate of the voice part just uh, in transposition. And you can see that there's not as much gap between uh, these two 16th notes and certainly this note is offset by a lot. So the positioning here is not exactly um, uh, you know, matching. Interestingly, there's another great plugin. If I'm gonna go into here, uh, it's a Patterson plugin called Mass Copy. 
And I'm going to check out an option here. Oops, usually it's set like this. But if you check uh, set none, there's this one option in the bottom left corner called note positioning adjustments. So basically what you can do with this plugin is just copy any one of these or multiple ones of these elements that you choose. Uh, in this case, I'm only choosing the note position adjustments. Um, and you can copy that from one place to the next. Now, the way that this uh, particular tool works is that you have to set the source. So what I'm doing is here, I'm, I'm selecting this measure. And I'm going to go in here and click set source. And then I'm going to go to up here and choose that measure and then paste. And it will paste what I have checked, the note positioning adjustments. So you saw that uh, the 16th notes just got adjusted uh, appropriately. So it's sort of an interesting other way to do the whole thing with the uh, measure tool where you can actually move these guys left and right. But it's different because you're actually doing it in a way that will accommodate the incorporate manual positioning from the uh, document options. Because again, it's it's a manual position using the special tools, not the uh, not the beat chart from the uh, from the measure tool. Right. But I'm just going to take you a little bit farther down the rabbit hole uh, with this particular uh, thing here. If we go into the clarinet part, uh, what we're going to see is, you know, obviously we don't have to deal with matching with the vocals anymore. So this the spacing here is actually kind of a little screwed up. Um, unfortunately, if we have this set to, let's say we're going to go to clear, right? Uh, just to kind of clear all of those manual positions. And we do that, right? It looks good in the part, but then it completely undoes what we did in the score and now these things are not um, lined up correctly or, or incorrectly as it were um, uh, it goes back to the way it was so if I undo that you'll see that that uh, that mass copy from Patterson gets reapplied right so what you can do in the part um, the thing to know is that the the manual positions are actually linkable and unlinkable so if I go into the special tools in the part for the clarinet here and just um, you know, select the, the measure. And I can actually just lasso select all of these and just press the clear key. I think it's the backspace key on Windows. Um, you'll basically uh, unlink and clear the position of all of, these, uh, all of these elements. And you can see that three of them, or four of them, actually turned orange, indicating that the position of these notes is actually unlinked. And so now when we go in here, and actually we don't need the clear, we can just do the ignore uh, the normal way here. And we go in here and we music space, it'll look normal, right? And it'll be all good to go. And then we go back into the score. And because these are still unlinked, these positions have been retained from that, uh, that, that mass copy of the Patterson, the spacing here, right? So it's, it's really interesting that these, uh, these note positions can actually be unlinked and relinked. In fact, if you right click, you can even see that you can unlink or relink in all parts and everything. So uh, these note positions are actually linkable and unlinkable. And this is kind of how you would deal with that very specific scenario. Now, as I mentioned in previous videos, you know, all of this stuff can be can be done a la carte, obviously, just, you know, if you need to do clear on certain measures and ignore on other measures and incorporate on other measures, you certainly can do that. Just, you know, come back in here and change it to what you need, select the measures you need and, uh, you know, run the music spacing and all is well and good. So that that sort of works the same way. You can do the same with the avoid collisions, the grace note spacing. I mean, all of this stuff can be used um, independently on a measure by measure basis. The last thing I want to uh, note here, actually, let me just do something. Let me just clear everything here. Clear all my note spacing. I'm going to go ahead and relink in all parts. Just we're just getting back. Oops, just getting back to normal here. The other thing that I want to mention is that the clear, ignore, and incorporate options here really only apply to uh, notes, rests, and accidentals. Anything else in the avoid collisions of section, you know, lyrics, for example, clefs, ledger lines, um, chords, or whatever you have set here, the manual positioning ignore, clear, incorporate doesn't affect those in the same way. Um, so, for example, if you were to, you know, move the syllable over here, and think that going in here and choosing clear is going to clear the manual position of the syllable, it doesn't. What it will do is it will um, clear the manual position of the note, 
um, and you did see it move. And what it's doing is it's sort of recalculating the left and right boundary of the lyric based on the, the manual position that I did, but it's not actually recentering this lyric. Uh, it's not actually you know resetting the position of this lyric relative to the note, if that makes sense. And we can go in here. It's the same thing with incorporate. It won't actually incorporate in the same way. So what you have to do with elements like this is actually, you know, in this case, you can just right click the, the syllable here and clear manual positioning and you'll see that it will get centered. And of course, if I go and um, respace the music, it will uh, recalculate the, the note um, spacing based on the left and right uh, boundaries of the lyrics uh, like that. So again, it's, it's a little bit confusing, but the manual positioning here really only applies to uh, notes, rests, and accidentals. It doesn't apply to the other elements in the avoid collisions of. If you need to clear the positioning of other elements, there's different ways to do that. Um, locally, most notably, you can usually just right click something and choose clear manual positioning uh, uh, to do that. All right, so uh, clear as mud. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit confusing, and, and uh, I, I think um, a lot of people struggle with this, and I, I've even struggled with it in the past, just sort of understanding um, you know, how to get my manual positionings to stick in the score. Uh, you know, and, and the difference between the, the beat spacing in the measure tool versus the note spacing, the note positioning in the special tools and uh, simple and speedy entry. Um, it, it's sort of important to understand how that interacts with the music spacing and especially these options here for manual positioning, whether you're clearing, ignoring, or incorporating. Um, so hopefully this has cleared it up a little um, and uh, you will all be the wiser for it. All right, so that's all I have to say about uh, manual music spacing. In the next video, we're going to talk about the last section of the document options here uh, having to do with all these other options. And then we're going to get into the spacing width table after that. And that gets really interesting. So uh, we have more to go. So come back and we'll talk about the other options here, which are also uh, important. So once again, thanks for watching. My name is Jason. Uh, this has been Finale Frontier Music Spacing. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't done so, please subscribe. And I will see you soon on the next video.